welcome, uh, greetings, and welcome once again to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, where every week we attempt to present some type of topic out there that has a practical and useful application in your life. My name is Jim L. R. Meyer, and I'm a behavioral health therapist in Seclair, and today I'm joined by three of my colleagues on my far left would be... Uh, my name is Rebecca Donnelly. I'm a PA student from Seton Valley University. And I'm Ashley Ardellitz. I'm a PA student from St. Francis University. And on my right, I'm Mike Sorg. I'm the uh, web director at, here at uh, Seclair, uh, helping with the social media and the video applications around here. And I'm on this side of the camera this week. <laughs> yes, so. we're certainly, certainly glad that you uh, switched places today, as today's subject certainly has something to do with a passion of yours. Uh, and just for a brief overview, everyone may be familiar or not, the Seclair is an integrative holistic psychiatric facility where we treat people we do not treat diagnoses where we take a holistic uh, view of an individual's life where we look at we look at their sleep we look at nutrition we look at sociability we look at spirituality we look at every single aspect of their life and uh, especially their dreams I love to deal with dreams and someday we're gonna that's an area that I want to explore on here a little bit more further however today uh, what we'd like to talk about uh, more and more here at Seclair, we're dealing with individuals who have been impacted by social media in their lives, Mike. Social media. Oh, I've been impacted. <laughs> so tell us, tell us a little bit about the impact of it on your life. Well, for me, it's uh, well, it's been a very positive impact. I mean, uh, kind of uh, going up with a. Uh, podcasting for almost 10 years now, which has really gotten me a lot of jobs like this, you know, and uh, really made a lot of friends and a lot of connections. And it's really changed my life, thankfully, for the positive, for the most part. For the positive, most part. And of course, when what we're talking about here, when we do here at Seclair, is that what's a disease? And what's a disease, Rebecca? A disease when something gets out of balance, is it not? So social media, technology, all it has a wonderful place when we control it when we can control it, when we can use it as tools. However, like a disease, a disease is when things get out of balance. And sometimes this, this can get out of balance too, and sometimes believe get out of what we believe is our control, and we believe we have no more control over it. So tell me a little bit about your experience with social media. You're not from the uh, uh, smoke signal area, era like I am. <laughs> well, I don't have too much experience with social media. My extent is pretty much Facebook and not even too much of that, um, and Snapchat maybe, a couple <laughs> friends here and there, but um, I've definitely seen it impact others, I guess, like family members and friends and well, Tell us a little bit about that. Um, Say more. Well, you, there are family members that are very connected with um, social media through video games, and that um, takes up a lot of time in people's lives, and... I think there needs to be a balance, I guess, between those two things. And mm -hmm. it's hard for people to find that balance. Sure, sure. Ashley? I think it can be a good thing when used appropriately. Um, you, like here a lot of times people posting stuff and then either an employer finding it, and that can be very negative. And um, I think it's just become a crutch that a lot of people use. Like they can hide behind their computer screen. Okay, well, quite often we get we get individuals here who have been who have been subjected to bullying mm -hmm. on on these type of various uh, outlets, and we'll talk about those in a moment. Uh, sometimes we get people whose lives are consumed by most. When most people think of addiction, what do you think of, Rebecca? Drug and alcohol. Drug and alcohol, right? Uh, Ashley, sure, sure. However, what what's an addiction? <laughs> yes, when things get out of your control. Usually there's a couple couple questions a person can ask themselves about addiction. Is if they're when if they're trying to stop they cannot control or they cannot moderate it, or if they're when they're using it that they have little or no control of the amount of time that they're spending on it, then then it's certainly things have fed itself. Would you agree, mm -hmm. Mike? I agree, I agree. And you talk about you know, kind of satisfying, you know, that little chemical that releases in your brain is, is what happens with addiction, right? And they're, you're, look, you're chasing that kind of high. Dopamine, yes. Yeah, and, and, and I feel like when some people are super involved in social media, 
Um, I mean, I, I see this a little bit with my work. I mean, my, my job is to get people to interact with Seclair and, and everybody else that I'm working with, you know, through that interaction on Facebook, on, on Twitter, and, and seeing a response or seeing a like, seeing, oh, people like my stuff, it releases a little bit of that chemical. You know, and, and some people are, are dedicated to making stuff that people will like and, 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 and having that response in some way. And uh, for the positive and the negative, we talk about trolls, for instance. They're chasing that as well to a very negative effect that's destructive, destructive to other people. So talk a little bit about that, Mike. About trolls themselves? Um, because, uh, you know, uh, trolling is, I think we've talked about previously on this, mm -hmm. on this cast, uh, somebody who's uh, very damaging on, on, the, on the internet, and uh, without going too deep into it, that will just kind of attack for the sake of attacking, and uh, you can't be, re they can't be reasoned with, and, and they're just there to make somebody, somebody's bad day uh, online. And, and again, you know, hiding behind that veil of maybe a fake username or no, nobody can touch me, you know, but, you know, thankfully some of these things are actually being addressed by the networks today. Uh, Twitter is finally stepping up about abusive nature on, on Twitter, uh, Facebook uh, as well to a certain extent, and uh, some things people are getting arrested for. For, for highly abusive or, or swatting, you know, is a thing that's been happening, um, wherein uh, they will actually call a SWAT team and say there's a hostage situation at some location of somebody that they have found out information about and have been trolling, and, uh, and, and that's it's some serious business. That certainly is serious business. So before we move any further, let's talk a little bit about the evolution of social media. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, talk a little bit about that, Ashley? Could you give us some of the highlights of uh, the evolution of social media? Sure. So, like, it really started picking up around 10 years ago, um, and it started with Flickr. And just since then, almost every year, it like, a new kind of social media has been added. Um, you see that YouTube has been around for 10 years since 2005, and then Twitter launched in 2006. Um, you have, in 2009, Facebook, is that's when they created their like button. Um, and it just it keeps going from there to so what let's, we have uh, today. So let's talk a little bit, of, Rebecca. Let's talk a little bit about Facebook. Uh, actually, that's when the the social media world really started to change when Facebook became became a presence. Could you share a little bit about Facebook? What's your understanding of it? Um, well, I think Facebook initially meant to just keep people connected. I think it started at Harvard. Um, keeping students connected, and then it kind of spread, and now we can talk to people halfway across the world, and um, that I think is a positive side, and just like you can learn different cultures that way as well, and um, keep in contact, um, but now through Facebook you can, there's so many different businesses on there now, and you can actually keep up with them too, so everyone has, it seems like a Facebook page, you can go on and like it and keep up with them, I guess. So tell us some of your positive experiences with Facebook, Mike. <laughs> uh, well, Facebook, uh, Facebook social media in general um, uh, really started with uh, uh, podcasting for me, actually. And that was in the MySpace days, which, you know, was a precursor to Facebook. Um, and, uh, you know, to the point where I'm connecting with other like minds and having these broader conversations to the point where we are making friends, friends internationally. In the first year of doing my podcast, nine years ago, uh, we had somebody actually visit us from London, you know, and super positive experience. But then we've also had uh, people that will come on and troll us because we're out there, you know, having an opinion about something. And uh, and you're going to attract these elements as well. And you have to deal with them, unfortunately. And the unfortunate part is a lot of people don't know how to deal with that negative element. And, and it kind of exposes them. We talk about like being kind of behind a curtain. It does also expose you. Um, and, and my concern is, is the high school factor. You know, it used to be, I used to come home and I could leave all the stuff, all the bullying at school and didn't have to deal with those kids until the next morning when I got on the bus. Now that doesn't end for a lot of them. And that's why things like Snapchat are coming up because you get to select your friends and people can't find you as easily. And it's very one-to-one. -one. You know, I think that's why a lot of kids are rejecting uh, at those younger ages, the, the Facebooks and the Twitters, because it's, they're, they're, they're don't like all their stuff being out there that we that people my age are willfully giving to the Googles and everything so we can get something that'll tell us you know uh, what traffic's like on the way home and it's a very interesting thing happening right now with that 
Well, certainly, and with the advent of instantaneous communication throughout the world uh, is a wonderful thing. We're able to uh, receive uh, images, sights, sounds uh, from all over the world instantaneously, and that's a wonderful thing. However, sometimes, uh, Rebecca, we allow ourselves to become overwhelmed mm -hmm. or to become a little bit deeper involved in that world when reality is happening right in front of us, mm -hmm. okay? And... 80% of communication is listening, okay? So what I see on most of these sites is mainly people talking at people rather than people talking with people, okay? And some folks out there, uh, not only do we receive the good things, unfortunately, if you're plugged into all these things, you have instant access to all the distressing images and the tragedies that happen all over the world instantaneously instantaneously and they, and they can be they, they can be overwhelming they, they can be overwhelming so we're looking we're looking for some type of moderation so when, when does something become a, a disorder when it when it's dysfunctional and causes distress in your life in, in social activities in educational activities like school uh, interactions with your friends with employers interpersonal relationships and there have been there have been many friendships begun on on social media there's there have been also many friendships ended mm -hmm. certainly certainly and, and there, there's been and also misunderstandings as I mean personally one of the, uh, the side effects was uh, people maybe don't understand the network uh, we had a friend that we didn't know that her, their grandparent had died. And we missed that because we didn't see it in our news feed because people don't understand. You don't see all of your friend's things. And once I go to that person's page, I would never have known that her, her grandfather died. I didn't know until a month later. And that put distance between us. And that was something we had to repair. Um, so I think, uh, you know, using that and, and, and thinking that everybody uses it the same way is a problem, too. And quite often, sometimes that uh, actually we get to feel that if we're not on Facebook, we're missing out on something, mm -hmm. or if we're not tuned into that Twitter feed, we're missing out on something. Mm -hmm. uh, when when really, really and truly, we are not. Uh, and it, you, it's a choice. Every, everything in life becomes a choice. Okay, and when we allow these things to get a, these things to overwhelm us, let me give you let me give you an example. A few years ago, I was visiting a friend of mine who was. Uh, wrapped up in video games to an extent that perhaps wasn't beneficial to his life. And he was, I went over to help him. I was going to take him to the grocery store, actually, because he didn't have any money, as he told me. So when we got there, he was playing a, a game. And he said all he had was $15. And he started to play this game. And I said, what are you doing now? And he says, well, I'm going to buy these items in this game so I can go further. I said, help me understand this. You're going to spend 15, your last $15 of real money to buy imaginary items mm -hmm. in an imaginary game. That is getting really weird. A lot of these, this is kind of an outside social media a little bit, but these these uh, pre, these uh, freemium games, I call them, that, that depend on that. And they are really kind of tapping into, I think you're going to find, uh, in, in you know, as we talk about 12 steps and issues, you're going to find a Video Games Anonymous at a certain point here. People buying all the donuts and Simpsons tapped out, and people, uh, I've seen somebody drop $80 on Candy Crush. And it was shocking, and and it, you know d just to play the game, just to keep playing the game, more or less, and and it's really you know it, it's it's startling that that people are doing this, but it is I think it is again that dopamine, and really kind of I want to say manipulation, but but it is to a point you know, and and, and there are certain points on you know, uh, Facebook I think is a problem with this too because Facebook pushes a lot of those kinds of games and you get all your friends that started with Farmville. You're like, Hey, help me, help me with my crops, you know, and you start playing too. And, and you don't, you want to help your friends. So it plays on that a little bit and there's a social element and it gets really scary, but they really are playing a lot of people's emotions and, and what people will react to. So, and again, Socrates, uh, Rebecca always talked about uh, moderation. Okay. Moderation, moderation. Uh, the Buddha talks about finding the middle path and the middle path isn't something right in the center between two extremes. Uh, the middle path is your path, Ashley. It's your path. So here at Seclair, what we try to do is help people to step back and take a perspective on their lives. 
okay? Step back, be the observer, and find out how all this is, is affecting their lives, uh, especially young people. And uh, sometimes I, myself, Mike, I get a little upset when I hear people say, oh, the youth of today, they're all wrapped up in uh, this. They should be out the sidewalk in the woods, blah, 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 all this other things. And, uh, you know, then I'll read them this uh, particular article and it talks about how uh, young people are so disrespectful and they're lazy and they're entitled and just it goes on and on and on and the person says yeah that's exactly that is that's exactly the way people young people are today and I said would you like to know when this was written I said it was written in 1600 BC it was written by Socrates talking about the youth of Athens mm -hmm. so uh, nothing really changes okay just just the circumstances and events and, and the way it's that, just the a different way format the absolutely yeah. absolutely yep absolutely so the idea here is what, what today we wanted to give you a little background on the evolution of social media uh, some of the issues that we're dealing here with Seclair with addiction issues to to the media uh, people who find that they don't have enough time they're isolating themselves one of the things about social media is it isolating it is. and quite often Mike what we find is then when we strictly deal with through electronic media we actually can become a society of strangers it can but it, but if used correctly in moderation Absolutely. in a proper way uh, I think it really is a very expanding and uh, it, it, it lifts the barriers. Absolutely. I, I, I fully, I, I have friends that I have met physically twice, but I've known them like some of my best friends and they live in Texas. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, I met their mom. <laughs> and, uh, and it's really great. And we have conversations every week and, and it's my friend circle has expanded is no longer limited to geographically, which is really nice if you're stuck in like Alaska and there's not a lot of options to Absolutely. find a lot of people that are into the things that you're into. So you as know. long, as long as we understand that these things can be tools exactly, and that we have power over them and we have a choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll ask uh, people whether they own their phone or the phone owns them. Yeah. So sometimes we have to sit back and take a look at that. And then sometimes, uh, Rebecca, we have to help people disengage a bit. Mm -hmm. Just help, help them very disengage. Important. I, I took a day this past weekend, especially since I am so open and have to listen to so many of my clients in so many situations. And I, I take a day and say, you know what? I'm not going to pick up the phone. I'm going to take the smartwatch off and I'm just going to watch TV, read books, do something else, not get involved with everybody else's stuff for a little bit. Sometimes it, you can give yourself permission to take a time out, Mike. Right. And that really is just giving yourself permission to say, you know what? I don't need to be here. I don't need to be on all the time. And that's the problem is, especially since we are getting so attached with so many things uh, we're wearing these days, uh, you know, it, it, it's nice to be reminded of that and say it's okay. And here at Seclair, we'd like to give you permission to be able to contact us in the future. Of course, uh, if you want to have a very positive conversation with us, you can do that on our Facebook, on our website, on Twitter. Uh, look for Seclair Life on Twitter, Seclair on Facebook, uh, Instagram. We're having a lot of fun. I had a video that I found a groundhog. It's been saying hi to me the last couple weeks over there behind Easy Harmony. Have so you I said got, hi back? I, I try to, then he runs away. <laughs> um, but I, I thought I'd share him uh, with everybody on Instagram uh, this week. And, uh, and all the links over there at seclair.com. Uh, we're posting a lot of videos from the Lifestyle Medicine Conference. Uh, the last video should be going up this week. And then uh, the great conference that we attended with Sisters of Charity that talk, we've you know, talked about a lot with them uh, lately. Uh, those will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. So a lot, a lot of fun stuff. Please comment. Let us know your thoughts on all the discussions that are going on there. Uh, please subscribe for uh, uh, look for the Seclair's Educational Grand Rounds on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, and of course, of course, the YouTube channel where you can see our smiling faces. Hi. Um, and uh, of course, you know everything else, Seclair.com, and, uh, and 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 say hi. <laughs> we'll say hi back. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's, it's it's such a joy and it's a privilege to allow to be a, you to be involved in your lives. That's just for sure. And as always, at the end of every uh, podcast, we give a free free prescription. Ashley and Rebecca, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and perhaps take up fishing. And for a, a truly mindful experience, we fish without bait. We fish without bait. No expectations. And as always, your assignment for the next week is to be good to yourself. Please think of something to to be good to yourself. And until then, namaste.